Hello, my name is Judd White. This is the first video in a series where I'll be covering the fundamentals of C Sharp using Visual Studio 2010. Uh, this video is uh, an introduction to Visual Studio and it's a uh, hello world as well with a, a little bit of a diving into how that works. Um, so real quick, a little bit about myself. I've been programming for about 20 years and uh, I've been using C Sharp since it was in beta in 2001. My previous background was in C++, which I've now mostly traded for, for managed code. My email is jwhite at cdtag.com. Feel free to write me there. My website is judsonwhite.com, J-U-D-S-O-N-W-H-I-T-E.com. Uh, <clears throat> on there, you can uh, see a little uh, more about me, um, my resume, some open source projects I work on, and stuff like that, and uh, all these videos will be posted on judsonwhite.com slash learn. Okay, this is a ground up tutorial. You don't need any previous programming experience. In this series, I'm going to cover everything you need to know to get started writing programs and get prepared for whichever path in programming you choose, uh, whether it's WPF, Silverlight, ASP.NET/MVC, WCF, Windows Forms, or anything else. Um, one of the most important things about learning to do anything, not just programming, is you can't be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, I've been writing writing code for a pretty long time and every day I write something that doesn't work. Making mistakes is really one of the best ways to learn. It, it forces you to um, really engage your mind and figure out what went wrong and why. Uh, you always come out uh, you know, a little bit better because of it. Uh, so keep trying and, and eventually you will succeed. Uh, the other tip I have for learning is repetition. Uh, you know, Go out and read stackoverflow.com, codeproject.com, take a look at some open source projects, whatever it takes to get you reading and writing more code. The, the more immersed you are um, uh, in it, it the, the quicker it, it becomes second nature. So if you have Visual Studio 2010 or Visual C Sharp uh, 2010 Express, you already have everything you need. Uh, if you don't, the Express version is free. Uh, just go to your favorite search engine and search for C Sharp Express. Um, <clears throat> uh, find the download link and install the software. So I'll just quickly show you uh, what it looks like today anyway. And really that's it. Save it. When you're done, open it. So after you have it installed, the first time you run Visual Studio it might ask you to choose a keyboard layout. If it does, choose C Sharp developers so you have a consistent experience with this series and uh, other C Sharp developers. Okay, so let's launch Visual Studio. For the introduction series, I'm going to, vi going to use Visual C Sharp Express, but I'll probably refer to it as Visual Studio most of the time. For later series where I get into more advanced topics and start using WPF and Silverlight, I'll switch over to Visual Studio 2010 Professional Edition. So, uh, over in this area under Recent Projects, you'll see uh, any recent solutions or, or projects that you've uh, uh, that you've recently <laughs> opened or, or saved um, after you've saved your first one. So go up to File and select New Project. And here this window shows the templates you have installed for creating a new project. Um, they're all C Sharp, they just contain uh, some different default settings. Uh, I'll run through the differences uh, real quick. So Windows Forms applications, this is for creating desktop applications using the older Windows Forms technology. It's uh, mostly been replaced by WPF, but a lot of businesses still use it. The WPF application template, WPF stands for Windows Presentation Foundation. It's the successor to WinForms, and it's a really huge shift in thinking uh, if you have previous WinForms experience. It's also a lot better in terms of control over the UI and architecting clean solutions. In future videos, uh, I'll show you all about that. 
console application, this is where we'll be working. It, uh, it doesn't have the learning overhead of a Windows interface, and it, it'll allow us to work from the ground up and keep code in view most of the time instead of having to switch between uh, form design or, or XAML markup. Class library is for creating an assembly with reusable classes. Uh, an assembly in .NET speak is a DLL or EXE written in .NET. You can create a class library if you want to separate entities or responsibilities into their own assembly, possibly to share between separate applications that you write or even to uh, repackage and sell. The WPF browser application, uh, also called the XAML browser application, are XBAP files you can distribute over the web and host in a browser. I believe it's limited to IE and Firefox at this time. Um, unlike Silverlight, <coughs> they, uh, they require the user to have the entire .NET framework installed. Uh, they don't really um, work in, in every browser like Silverlight does, and they're still sandboxed by default, meaning they, they only get partial trust and lack the capabilities of a true desktop application. Uh, XBAPs came around before Silverlight was really usable. Today, I, I really can't think of a reason why you'd want to create one. <clears throat> and uh, Empty Project uh, is just that. You get to set everything up yourself. So let's select Console Application and give it a name. Hello World, the good old standard. And here you can press Enter or click OK. So here's our project. Um, uh, in this window here, we have our code. And to the right, we have the uh, Solution Explorer, which contains all of our project files. You can see up here um, that we're, we're currently working in program.cs, which is the, the only code file we have in our project right now, other than uh, assemblyinfo.cs, which is uh, generated by the template we selected. So assembly info, I'll show you real quick, uh, contains metadata about the assemblies, such as the title uh, up here and the version number, which is way down here, um, and uh, you know some other attributes as well. But for now, we're going to concentrate on uh, program.cs because that's where our code is actually going to be. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, um, and probably not a lot of other intro videos are, are going to do this, but um, I really believe this is a, a really good thing to do is I'm going to double click on properties and I'm going to uh, turn treat warnings as errors on. So to do that I'm going to go over to build and scroll down to where treat warnings as errors is and say all. And <clears throat> the reason why I do this is because uh, compiler warnings often represent uh, a logic error which can be pretty difficult to trace down. Uh, so with warnings as errors on, you can save yourself some debugging time by catching these problems before the program even compiles. All right, let's close the properties tab and return to our code. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is write hello world, show you how, show you that it works, and then explain what's going on. Alright, uh, now I'm going to run this by pressing Control F5. And I'll move this into view. Okay. And you can see we have a Hello World displayed in a console window. Uh, running with Control F5 runs the program without debugging. Um, if I had just pressed F5 or the play button in the toolbar, here I'll show you. Uh, the program runs and then immediately exits without asking us to press a key, so we can't really see the uh, results of our code. Um, the reason why you'd want to do this is so that you can actually have breakpoints, step through the code, um, and uh, we, we will do that uh, shortly, um, probably in the next uh, two, or th two videos or so. Alright, so what I have written is console.writeline, open parent, uh, double quote, hello world, uh, double quote, close paren, and a semicolon. So what's going on with this whole thing here? Well, let's focus on the code we wrote in main first, the console.writeline. 
Um, I'll retype it so we can see one of the really great features of Visual Studio called IntelliSense. So as you type, uh, Visual Studio knows a number of things which are valid for where you're typing. It's context aware, so depending on which part of a statement you're typing, the list will be uh, populated appropriately. So here I have console, uh, a static class which lives in the system namespace. We'll talk about namespaces and uh, static classes shortly. So if I hover over it, uh, Visual Studio tells me a little bit about the class in addition to the error I currently have in my code. Um, here you can see the uh, system.console and some uh, just some description information about this class. So um, another thing to note is that C-sharp is case sensitive so if I change this to console with a lowercase c uh, you'll see the color of the word is now changed because it, it's no longer detected as a as a class, and uh, I also get a different error um, when I hover over it. So uh, let's change it back. Uh, all right. So now uh, a little bit about classes. So classes are are used to organize functionality or to model data. Uh, for example, console is a class you could classify as a utility class as uh, most static classes are, since its only purpose is to act on data which you provide to it. Uh, it doesn't actually store any data. Uh, the reason why we have these methods in a class called console is because all these methods relate to interacting with the console, like, meaning the keyboard and the screen. Uh, we're getting a bit into class design, but it's important to know that the .NET base class library, or the BCL as it's also known, uh, organizes functionality into separate classes. Uh, we'll, we'll talk even more about classes later. So next we have the dot. On a static class we use the dot to access members of the class. In this case we're going to um, access the method called right line. <clears throat> and again IntelliSense is there to help us by providing a list of valid members we can access and a uh, brief documentation on what it does. So uh, here's the list. You can really just scroll through here. The one on one is right line and if I hover over it, it it tells me a little bit about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose right line and let's see. Uh, so I've got the right line and whenever you're calling a method directly after the method name use an open parent or parenthesis. Uh, again, IntelliSense is here to help us or bother us depending on what we're doing. Uh, you can see there are 19 different ways to call the right line method and you can navigate this list either with the up down arrows or you can actually click the arrows uh, that are on the screen. Uh, if you hit escape, IntelliSense goes away. Uh, and when the cursor is inside the parent uh, of a method, you can hit Control Shift Space to to bring it back, and there's your IntelliSense back. And one thing I think I skipped is uh, <clears throat> the same thing. Excuse me, on the console class. So you have IntelliSense here. You got some stuff. If you made it go away, you'd hit Control Space to get your IntelliSense to come back. So okay. Uh, this is where it was. Um, so I know how I want to call right line, so I'm just going to type it. Uh, I'm going to pass it a string, which uh, is a text enclosed inside double quotes. So I'm going to do that. I think it was capitalized. Um, this is the only parameter I want to use, but if I hit comma after the last double quote, I can see there's more options based on what I've already typed in. So uh, I'm going to keep it simple with one parameter. So I'm going to delete the comma after the double quote and just going to uh, close paren and uh, that signifies that I'm done passing parameters to this method. Uh, now I'm going to end my statement with a semicolon. In C sharp all statements end with a semicolon. Uh, one of the nice effects of this uh, syntax rule is you can have a long statement 
spend multiple lines without explicitly telling the compiler you're, you're going to continue the statement on the next line. Uh, this can uh, help improve readability when you or, or somebody else looks at your code later. So, for example, um, if this was something much longer, I could write this and it, it, it's still completely valid. Uh, here, I can show you that this runs just fine. But with something short like this, one line is totally sufficient. Okay, so that does it for this video. Uh, in the next video, I'll break down um, a little bit more on what's going inside this code file and, uh, and talk about um, some more features of uh, Visual Studio and C Sharp. Thanks for watching.